Now, so far, it's been quite easy as we were trying to solve how much I will have in the future if I invest a certain amount in the past. Now, we're going to look at in these two formulas that we have in our future value is equal to present value 1 plus i n in that formula or in that's the simple interest formula or in the compound interest formula 1 plus i to the power of n okay if I want to now know um, what must p be in other words what should my present value be or how much interest should I earn or how long should I invest it for how many times should I get interest if I have questions like that, how will I go about to solve it? So in other words, solving the present value, the interest, or the number of times I get interest, often called the number of years. Okay, so here's an example. How much must I invest to have 10,000 Rand after five years? So let's draw a little timeline. Always draw a timeline. It really helps. Zero, one, two, three. Four, five. So this is time zero, that is time five. We want 10,000 Rand after five years. And we want to know how much must I invest, in other words, in the beginning, so that I have 10,000 Rand after five years. Now this, on my timeline, always re represents P, and that represents F, my present value and my future value. I can also call this P0, that one will be P1, that one will be P2, that one will be P3. So instead of calling it the past value, it can be the present value after one year, after two year, after three years, after four years, and this one will be the present value after five years. That's just another type of notation we might use. Okay, so how will we actually answer this question? Well, all we're trying to do to be honest, is if I have this formula, A is equal to P 1 plus I, I just want P. I want to solve P. So to get P on his own is not that difficult. All I need to do is divide with 1 plus I with this whole bracket. Okay, But remember, in an equation, you can do anything as long as you do it on both sides. So we must just divide this side also. So on the right hand side, that bracket cancels. And that leaves us with a brand new beautiful formula saying to work out my present value, I must take my future value. Sorry, I used an A here. Okay, often the formulas do use A. Okay, I apologize. I hope I didn't confuse you. Okay, but um, it's actually F for future value plus 1 plus I N. There we go. There's a formula for uh, simple interest. Okay, how about compound interest? Well, it's no different. So we had future value is equal to my present value, 1 plus i to the power of n. Only thing here is what I'm dividing with is not just the bracket, but actually the bracket to the power of n. So all of those brackets on both sides, 1 plus i to the power of n. And that means my present value will be equal to my future value divided by 1 plus i n. And this one I just want to write a little bit different for you as well, just to show you something quite cute. I can also write it, when I divide with a power, I can multiply with the negative power. In other words, with uh, multiply with this bracket to the power of negative n. And here what you, what you can see is if I want to take an amount, like that amount, and I want to take it backwards in time, all I do is on my number line I'm going in the negative direction. That is why I'm using a negative exponent to take my future value to become a present value or a past value. And the same goes for if I want to get here. I will just go 1, 2, 3. If I want to know how much was this amount 3 years ago, I would have had to the power of negative 3. And if I want to take this value and I want to take it 2 years forward, I would have a positive 2. I'll take that value multiplied by the bracket 
with a positive 2. Okay, but maybe I'm confusing you now. Let's rather just use these formulas um, to solve our question initially. They, we had two scenarios. We had scenario A, 15% simple interest. So let's try that. Okay, so I want to know how much must I invest my present value. If I had a future value, so I don't know my present value, I know my future value is equal to 10,000 Rand. My interest that I was earning was 15%. Remember, 15 over 100. Extremely important. And the number of times I will earn interest is I'll actually earn interest five times because it's over five years. Okay, so here we go. 10,000 divided by 1 plus, and here we go, 15 over 100 times 5. So let's calculate that. 10,000 divided by, and everything in the denominator, I'm going to put in a bracket so that it knows everything is in the denominator. 1 plus, and there's a bracket, 15 over 100. Close my bracket, times 5. Close my bracket again. There we go. That's my denominator is equal to... I must invest 5,714 Rand and 29 cents if I round it. 5,714 Rand and 29 cents. There we go. That's how much I must invest if I have simple interest at 15%. How about compound interest? So I just showed you that formula. If I want the present value, I take the future value, 1 plus i, but because I'm going back in time from future to past, I use a negative n. Okay. So my future value, I want to be 10,000. My present value, I don't know. So let me put it there. Present value, I don't know. My interest this time. For this question, let's just see. My interest is 10%. Sorry, 11%. So eleven over one hundred. And finally the time is also exactly the same. Time is five years. Okay, so the number of times I'll earn interest over that period is five times because I get it once a year for five years. So there we go. Let's substitute everything in. I take my 10,000 times 1 plus 11 over 100 to the power of negative 5. Use our calculator. So 10,000 times... 1 plus 11 over 100. Close my bracket to the power of 5, but not just 5, negative 5 equals 5,934. 5,934 and 51 cents. 51 cents. This time, we see, aha, uh -huh, I actually need to invest less on this scenario with a simple interest at 15% than I would have if I have the compound interest at 11%. So this time it does make a difference to choose simple interest. I'll need to only invest 5.7 instead of 5.9. Cool. I think that illustrates very well how you can get the present value. In the next video we'll look at what about interest. Now I want to work out how much interest must I earn to get a certain amount.